I'm sure you've scoured your fair share of bargain or clearance bins at game stores over the years, and undoubtedly there was one game for the PlayStation 2 that you frequently saw staring back at you, often with a price tag of only a few dollars just begging you to play it. You remember the cover vividly, an innocuous yellow plane in a serene mountain backdrop, Sky Odyssey, a game that was released on the PlayStation 2 in North America just under a month following the console's debut. Had you flipped the game over, however, and read the back of the box, you may have been persuaded by its flavorful description. Sentences like, Your piloting skills and nerves will be tested to their adrenaline-screaming limits, and bullet points like, Pulse-pounding missions, should not be taken lightly. Sky Odyssey is actually one of the most intense games I've ever played on the PS2, and I definitely was not prepared for it. Overshadowed by the monstrous PS2 lineup of 29 different games, including stuff like Tech and Tag Tournament, SSX, Dynasty Warriors 2, and Time Splitters, just to name a few. It's easy to say that Sky Odyssey barely stood a chance to gain any kind of recognition beyond the most hardcore of Flight Sim fans that managed to even find the game in the first place. The good news is, still to this day, Sky Odyssey remains really cheap and plentiful on the secondary market. In fact, finding a copy for around $5 is still relatively effortless, especially if you're looking on sites like eBay or Amazon or honestly practically anywhere, even in real life game stores. You should typically always find a copy of Sky Odyssey just sitting around. Developed by Cross, a Japanese developer that got its start working on games such as Hagane on the Super Nintendo, Kishin Doji Zenki Batoru Raiden on the Super Famicom, Ginga Fuke, Densetsu Sapphire for the TurboGrafx CD, Bulk Slash on the Sega Saturn, and a really obscure one that unfortunately never made it to America called Blue Legend of Water on the PlayStation 1. It was clear that Cross was pretty well versed in all different kinds of genres, willing to try any kind of game on any kind of platform, and pretty soon they were going to get their first crack at the PlayStation 2 with the Flight Sim Sky Odyssey. The game was led and directed by Mitsunori Shoji, who previously worked on the Battle Arena Toshinden series. Sky Odyssey, however, would be his first and last time having a major creative role in game development. Even just trying to search his name brings up very few results for what came after his time and involvement with Sky Odyssey. Yasuhide Kobayashi was the producer who would go on to have important roles in dozens upon dozens of PlayStation Studio games, including some of my own personal favorite games of all time, like Dark Cloud, Eco, and Shadow of the Colossus. And speaking of which, the composer for Sky Odyssey was none other than Ko Otani, the man responsible for the Shadow of the Colossus' infamous soundtrack. The concept of the game is built around the idea of less is more, there's no combat, no distracting radio chatter, just simple objective-based missions, or A to B sort of marathon runs through fantastical environments, usually just a tad too outlandish to be possible in real-world settings. The only semblance of human life in this game is presented through a monotone narrator who explains each objective before setting out into the game's missions, keeping you calm before the action hits the fan. On your quest to be the first person to find the Tower of Maximus, the game takes you through settings such as crumbling mountain ranges dotted with waterfalls, windswept caverns that will test even the most seasoned flight simulator fans, and more importantly though, there are copious amounts of calm, barren landscapes where you just zone out and let the wind carry you through the levels. You see, the levels in Sky Odyssey are often quite lengthy, 
It's not out of the ordinary to spend 10 to 15 minutes coasting through a level, only for them to throw a curveball at you, like a stalled engine at the end, and now it's up to you to land and survive the ordeal. Crashing means starting the level over from scratch as well, so it's a prospect that will always have you on the edge of your seat, and in many instances, I could actually feel my heart rate increasing, just like the back of the box claimed it would. For example, in one mission, you need to fly through a twisting gorge hidden behind a waterfall, and then you need to navigate a maze of passages to find these runes that are hidden inside of a cave. And inside this cave is where you recover a piece of map that you need to find your next destination. In order to do this though, you have to land safely, and then afterwards you have to take off again to reach the outside of the cave. This may sound simple, but because of the way this game controls, it is a nerve-wracking experience. And doing all of that alone takes about 10 to 12 minutes. There's no checkpoints and there's no room for error. One mistake and you have to reset the entire level. And then suddenly, just when you think you're done with the level, you got the map, you're clear to land and you're leaving the cave, you think it's going to say, okay, mission accomplished, but suddenly your engine forcibly catches fire and breaks. And now you have to try and maneuver through this outside winding waterfall ravine using only the momentum that you're carrying from the initial takeoff. This drastically changes the way that the plane handles and was such a refreshing take on what is otherwise a very repetitive mission structure in this game. And it's these moments where they just throw a little wrench in your plans that really makes Sky Odyssey stand out and feel more special. And this is something that I really wasn't anticipating at first. This moment really managed to get my heart racing. The sheer thought of crashing and having to start over was overwhelming. I just wanted it to end and be over, but it just kept going and going. It was testing everything I knew about the game's simple yet challenging dual analog controls up until this point. Eventually you either just hit a wall and start over, which did happen to me, or you succeed with a sense of adrenaline fueled accomplishment, and it was really after this moment that I knew that Sky Odyssey was way more special than I had imagined. The way the missions work is they give you many opportunities to choose the order in which you play missions. So one playthrough can definitely be different from the last depending on what order you choose to take the missions in. Some of them are quite short but very high in the difficulty scale. For example, there's one mission where you have to refuel from a moving train, which is just so intense. And then there's another one where you just have to land your plane on a flight deck on an aircraft carrier, but it happens to be in the middle of a windy thunderstorm in the dark. So the variety of mission length and structure helps the game from becoming a little too repetitive. Another level that's a great example of this game's sense of adventure and variety is one called The Great Divide. It's a lengthy 10 minute ordeal where you must land on a strip just past a large snowy mountain range. In order to do this though, you need to empty your fuel tank to lighten your plane to make the steep decline possible. And once you do this, you only have 3 minutes left to land before running out of your remaining fuel reserves. The game then tells you to follow an arrow that guides you to the landing strip but what they don't tell you is that it's an actually incredibly treacherous path that is most likely to lead to you crashing. There is another option however, and as my engine kept stalling and time was quickly running out in an attempt where I did clear the mountain, I stumbled upon an unmarked cave that took me to a also unmarked landing pad. This was a great moment of relief for one of the many heart pounding moments the game offers. There are still so many missions I have yet to try and hope to experience in another playthrough, and especially because you're able to also choose what your final mission will be. This leads me into one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had with a PS2 game. The final level of Sky Odyssey is an absolute roller coaster of emotions, all rising and falling with the wind that carries my plane through some of the most treacherous turns yet encountered in the game. You just barely scrape by and have to avoid these level ending crashes 15 minutes into the level. Eventually though, you do hit an extremely rare checkpoint after a particularly difficult section. They follow this up with some somber music to put you at ease right before ramping up the difficulty once again in one of the game's most challenging claustrophobic tunnels that would make even Fox McCloud tremble in fear. It all feels like a surreal theme park ride, 
with moving mechanisms and wheels and falling debris and sections so scary, I was having to take deep breaths between each turn. It made me do something that we all used to do as a kid where we would move our bodies in the direction we want our plane to go in the video game. Climbing a steep waterfall was making me physically reel back in my seat for hopes it would make some kind of a difference. Eventually, I crawl free into the fresh air once again and out of the cramped underground caves. Whimsical music kicks in to give me a sort of false hope before throwing more hairpin turns my way. It's a carefully orchestrated level design that gives you a feeling of safety only to throw you right back into the fire. It seemingly never ends, this level just goes on and on, but that's part of the genius behind it. After what seems like an eternity, the end of the level and the game itself is made clear to me by a small landing strip on my minimap. Eventually my doubts start to come true though, I don't trust myself to land the plane. My nerves start getting the better of me, something I've been doing in this game for hours now, I'm second guessing because I know failure means starting over all over again. I do come to the finale, and there's a big open clearing filled with flowers, though as it turns out it's more of a grave sight because after 15 minutes, as I'm trying to land my plane, my engine stalls as I'm trying to maneuver into position to land, and I get a game over. Luckily, I don't have to start at the very beginning this time though, as one of the very few chances this game gives you to resume a level at a later point is true here in the final stage. I do have to however make my way back through the underground passage once again. When I do finally get back into the clearing with the flowers, this time I take my time to plot out my landing, all while battling these crazy winds, and this time I just barely land the plane in the designated spot thus ending one of the most intense levels I've played in all of my years of playing PlayStation 2 games. And after all that, you're rewarded with a short CGI cutscene as the camera zooms out to the credits, a small reward for a large undertaking. The developers at Cross succeeded in making an action adrenaline filled adventure, just like the back of the box claimed. Unfortunately, just as Cross was beginning to find their mark in the industry and show a lot of promise as a small developer out of Japan with Sky Odyssey, things took a quick turn for their future. Seven years later, they would help Hudson release Wing Island on the Wii, and then go on to exclusively help Nintendo on games like the DECA Sports series, the Wii Party games, and the Mario Party series. And while these are all successful games in their own right, I can't help but feel that Cross was just getting their wings off the ground, and they fell into the hands of Nintendo, which likely stifled their creative freedom just a bit, and their ability to grow as a development studio. Sure, working on a renowned series such as Mario Party is an amazing accomplishment, but it just makes me wonder what kind of flight games they would still be making today if given the opportunity again. It's very unlikely that we will ever see a game like Sky Odyssey release outside of efforts by indie developers these days, Flight simulator games now just aim to feel like you're in the next Top Gun movie. There's really no room for an experimental, simplistic, and oftentimes relaxing flight game in this crowded AAA space in the modern gaming industry. Sky Odyssey really takes me back to a simpler time when games were okay with being shorter than normal or more basic in their gameplay aspects, but what games like that did, they did extremely well. So the next time you're out and about and you see a copy of Sky Odyssey on the shelf for just a few dollars, give it a chance that it deserved over two decades ago. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit the like button and also consider becoming a channel member. I'll be giving people that join the chance to vote in polls to help decide my future game reviews such as this one.